So how many of you exercise regularly? How many of you exercise by going to the kitchen for more ho-hos or ding-dongs? I want to begin a new series of messages today out of the book of James. So please hear the word of God from the book of James, beginning at verse, chapter 1, verse 17. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father, who created all the lights in heaven. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. We are out of all creation, became his prized possession. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. May God's word be placed in our hearts this day. As we come into worship this morning, it's hard to believe summer is almost over. Next Sunday is Labor Day Sunday. Where did the summer go? What happened? I, I, I saw that we had some strange people in church today, the Dittmans. Where, where are they? We haven't seen them for a month or more. They've been in Germany visiting their family. It's so good to have them back. I met a Young couple here from Texas, wave your hand. It's so good to have them up visiting the great state of South Dakota. Uh, it is good, good to have them. Our college kids are back. So great to have them back with us again. How wonderful it is. The seasons change. Our lives change. I was reminded this morning that life is a hard journey. I visited with Roger Isler and I shared with Michelle. Ruby has completed her first rounds of chemo and radiation. It's been very, very difficult. She's in a care facility. She needs rest desperately. And Roger is holding hope. His faith is solid. They pray for healing. But it's difficult. I'm touched by Amber and her willingness to be Christ to Joe by giving a kidney. A great sacrificial gift. So this morning as we turn to James, we hear the words of James as he begins to teach the church and the Christians, both Jews and Gentiles, what it really means to live for Jesus Christ. The title of our message, my wife gave me the title. The title of the message is, What Did You Say? Most of you know I have a little hearing deficit. And I listen really, really well, but I sometimes don't hear very well. So will you pray with me as we begin today? Lord, open our hearts. 
Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Disturb us. Rock us, Lord, that we might see and might understand who we are in relation to who you call us to be. Lord, this morning I pray that the words I share will be lifted up with honor and with glory to you. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We just finished a series out of the uh, book of Ephesians and Paul's words to the church about unity and about love. And now we turn to James. So who is James? Well, most scholars believe that James was the brother of Jesus. We're going to look at the book of James throughout September. James wrote this book to Jewish Christians primarily in 49 AD. It was one of the earliest writings that's included in our New Testament. And it was written out of his concern for the persecuted church. Does that sound familiar today? I read a vivid, a vivid writing about the church in Afghanistan this week. I read about church members who chose to stay, church members who are now with Jesus because they were murdered for their faith. Is the church persecuted today? Absolutely. Just as it was in the day of the disciples, in the day of James. Jerusalem was filled with Roman soldiers. The Romans had scattered the Christians to the far ends of the world. They had persecuted them. They had killed them. And because of that, Christians spread all throughout the world. And James is a book that was written for practical advice for living the Christian life. Christians for Dummies. It's a how-to book. And in verses 17 and 18, it speaks of God's light. God, the giver of all good gifts. The scripture said, whatever is good and perfect comes to us from God above, who created all heaven's lights. Unlike them, he never changes or cast shifting shadows. In his goodness, he chose to make us his own children by giving us his true word. And we, out of all creation, became his choice possessions. I like that. In all of creation, God chose us. God chose us to be his people, his hands, his witness. The Jews had been scattered and they had been mixed with Gentiles all over the world. And they had been challenged to adapt to a new faith. A faith in the belief of God's Son, Jesus Christ. A faith to be in unity with all the other believers. How many of you liked change? Not a single hand. That's interesting, isn't it? Well, I read a story this week about a Catholic community. And a new Methodist moved into this Catholic town. Now, the Catholics have a tradition of no red meat on Fridays, especially during Lent. But this Methodist love to barbecue. And the only way to get him to stop barbecuing on Friday was to convert him to become a Catholic. So they worked and they worked and they worked on him. And finally he decided to become a Catholic. And the priest proclaimed, you were raised a Methodist, but now you are a Catholic. Just like that. Well, cheers erupted for the converted friend. But the next Friday, the townspeople once again smelled barbecue. So they sent the priest to the newly converted Methodist home. And there was the Methodist in the backyard grilling steaks. The priest looked over the fence and he saw the Methodist look down on the steak saying, You were born a steer, 
you were raised a steer and now you are a fish. <laughs> change is hard. But change is inevitable. To Jews, change was not easy. But they had to change. Verse 19 says, remember this, my dear brothers, everyone must be quick to listen, but slow to speak and slow to become angry. Our call to express our faith by listening, we are called to quiet our hearts, to listen rather than talking all the time. James knew that most great talkers are not good listeners. So James tests our faith by asking, are you listening to God? Jesus was a listener. He listened to the needs of the people around him. You remember the disciples, he heard them arguing about who would be the greatest in the kingdom of God. And as he listened, he brought them to understand the truth that all have a place in the kingdom of God. No one is above another. Do you know which organ in the body requires the most energy? The first two obvious guesses might be the heart or the brain. But actually it's the inner ear which demands the most energy. Attentive listening can be draining. So God made sure that the ears get all of our necessary power to carry out this important task. Listening, but do we Hear. James said, be slow to speak. How many of you listen, but as you listen, you're already formulating your answer to whatever you think the person is saying? Happens all the time, doesn't it? We don't take the time to quietly listen before we kick our brain into what we should say. I read a cute story about a frog and two geese. The frog wanted to go to Florida. So he convinced the geese to give him a ride to Florida. He was a smart frog. He took a string and tied to each leg of the geese. And then he held that string in his mouth and the geese flew to Florida with him suspended between. It was a great trip. And they made it to Florida and as they came in for a landing in Orlando, they heard a man from the ground yell, those are some smart geese. Well, the frog couldn't take it. He opened his mouth to tell him, it was my idea. And as he did, he plummeted to his death. How many times are we like that? We want to speak up. We want to get credit. We want to know everyone to know that was my idea. Or that wasn't my idea, whichever way. You can win more people to Christ with your ears than with your mouth. It's a pretty profound statement, isn't it? But how many of you have needed someone to just listen to you? To just understand where you're at. Not that they have the answers, but they have enough love to quietly listen to you. Verse 22 said, Do not deceive yourselves by just listening to his word. Instead, put it into practice. Our actions prove that we mean what we say and what we live. 
verses 26 and 27. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are just fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Pure and lasting religion in the sight of God our Father means that we must care for orphans and widows in their troubles and refuse to let the world corrupt us. I watched this week as our men and women in Afghanistan desperately try and help a hurting people. I, I saw as babies were passed over the wall to try and get them to safety. We watched as a bomb went off and many people lost their lives. We have been put on earth to be the hands of Christ. We've been put on earth to help one another. If that visual effect of what happens there doesn't crush us, doesn't break us, doesn't bring us to the point of saying, Lord, how can we be your hands? Then maybe our faith isn't genuine and real. My dad taught me a long, long time ago that your word is your bond. Dad would say your word is as good as gold. And he lived by that. There was an old farmer in Huron. He sold his land just before land went up really, really high. He sold his land for $1,400 an acre. At that time, it was a great, great price. He sold it on contract for deed with a handshake. And in two years, when the young man who agreed to buy it, was able to purchase it, land had doubled or tripled in value. This farmer stood on his bond, his handshake. It cost him millions of dollars. But he told this young man, my word is good. You know, that touched my heart. He just passed away not too long ago, the Wessels. And I remember that story, and it, and it came into my heart that our bond is given through the love of Jesus Christ, and our handshake is as good as any legal contract. But is that true in our lives today? The world sees how we live, and the world determines the depth of our faith. I never questioned the, the Wessel's faith, ever, ever, ever. He stood on the principles of God's Word. I read a story this week of a sociology class many, many years ago who decided to create a, an experiment, and so they went to a slum in Baltimore, Maryland, and they evaluated 200 boys who were living below poverty level. And they wrote an essay on their potential for success. Every evaluation said the boys don't have a chance to be successful in life. 25 years later, the study was followed up to see what had happened to those boys. There were 176 left out of the 180 boys. 176 out of the 180 had achieved more than ordinary success. They were above the average. And so they asked the boys, how do you account for your success? And every one of the boys said, there was a teacher. So they went and they found this teacher she was still alive, so they interviewed her, and they asked, what's the magic formula? How did all of these boys attain success in this environment that says they should never get out? Oh, she said, it's very simple. She said, I just loved those boys. 
Not rocket science, isn't it? I just loved those boys. Those boys had a sense of value, a sense of worth, because this teacher listened, spent time with them, walked with them, and loved them. I saw a quote about our title of our message, What Did You Say? A prayer about the title of our message. A prayer that said, Lord, make my words sweet and tender, for I may have to eat them tomorrow. The Bible says a lot about our tongue about our words, about what we say to one another. And James tells us, let us be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Why? So that others might see the love of Jesus Christ in our hearts and in all the things that we do. James, Jesus' brother. James grew up with Jesus. You think James says, oh, he's mom and dad's favorite. James, who eventually gave his life because he loved his brother. He loved God. So let us be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Amen and amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, this morning we are touched by your love and grace. We are touched by James' words of, of helping us understand what it means to live the Christian life. How to the practical examples of what it means to be a Christian. So Lord, plant in us the beauty of this message. Plant in us the willingness to listen. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Deb, would you join me and bring that cross, please? Would you stand for our benediction and for the closing? I was reminded, no, stay up here. I was reminded a few weeks ago I gave you a cross. Do you remember? It wasn't this big and nice. It was just a little one. There's still crosses in the office. Amber, I have this cross in my office. It's a cross made by some gentlemen in Nebraska and it's meant to fit in the palm of your hand. It's meant as a gift from our church, the body of Christ. As you go, may you always remember that we are with you and that God is with you. Thank you. Deb has told me that we are going to the state fair next week. Oh, Lord, help us. Why do we go to the South Dakota State Fair in Heron for a whole week? Because our grandkids are there showing livestock. And so we're going to be away. Pastor Michelle will lead you in worship next week. And I just pray a blessing on you. And I pray that God will touch your hearts. That God will lead you to the place where you can truly say, Jesus, you are Lord, and I give my all to you. Amen and amen.